the question which I wish to discuss today is whether is it permissible for the police to seek the custody of a person accused of a criminal offence. You would have come across in newspapers that the police had sought the custody of the accused for interrogation and the custody has been given. The accused has been given to the police custody. This is a common practice. But is it constitutionally permissible? My answer is, it is certainly not permissible. It is in clear violation of the, the, the constitutional protection against self-incrimination. Article 20, sub-article 3 of the constitution in unmistakable terms states that no person accused of an offence shall be compelled to be a witness against himself. This along with the article sub-article 1 and sub-article 2 of article 20 constitute the very core of the constitution. Article sub-article 1 of article 20 says that speaks about the concept of ex post facto offence. An act which was not an offence at the time of its commission shall not by a subsequent law be made an offence or given a greater punishment than the one which was prescribed at the time of the commission of the offence. Then the second is the protection against double jeopardy. So the, section, the article sub article 2 says no person a, a, a prosecuted for an offence shall be um, no person uh, punish, prosecuted punished for an offence shall be prosecuted again. So therefore the protection against the double jeopardy. Are these principles uh, new to the our law? These principles are as old as the Roman law itself. So the Roman law which is a source of the common law along with the statutes, precedents and customs. Roman law is the primary source. And the Roman law was in, the, uh, was in existence. The classical Roman law existed prior to the Christ. So the concept is Akisare namo sedabet nisi koram diyo. That is, nobody shall be compelled to accuse himself except before God. These concepts, which are, which are it is part of the natural law na or natural justice, came to be buried during the Dark Ages. Dark Ages were the time when the church had the predominant role. And you must have heard of Inquisition. In Inquisition, the prosecutor, the investigator, the judge are all one. And that then, later, you know, the people of uh, England, the barons of England, they extracted a, a statute in the, in the form of a contract, a grand, a grand charter called Magna Carta. And that means reinforcement of of the revisiting of many of the fundamental principles which are part of the, the Roman law. Then you must have heard of Bill of Rights. And these principles, the protection against self-incrimination, protection against double jeopardy, and protection against ex post, ex post facto law, these are, are the, the core of the, our constitutional uh, protection against protection of freedom of life and liberties. And these principles we have adopted from the common law, and which these principles are embedded in the American constitution. And now the question is, our constitution in, art, in, in unmistakable terms says that no person be compelled to be a witness, no person accused of offence shall be compelled to be a witness against himself. Still, the police seek the custody of the accused for interrogation and it is readily granted. And why it is happening? I must say, it may be a big surprise to you, this issue has not been raised or decided since independence. The first issue, the first major case on the, on the interpretation of Article 23 of the Constitution 
was Kati Kaul Algad versus State of Maharashtra. That was in 1954. The, sorry, I made a mistake. The first case was the M.B. Sharma's case in 1954. That was heard by a, the full court of the Supreme Court. At that time, the Supreme Court had only eight judges. And the Supreme Court, in the, the full court of the Supreme Court, held in that case that the protection against uh, 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 protection against self-incrimination is available not not within the not inside the court alone outside also indirectly saying that the protection against self-incrimination is tend to uh, protection against interrogation but the issue was not squarely raised it was not argued and therefore the judgment did not in, in express to him state so then that judgment left many things unsaid. Therefore, another case came to be. Uh, so therefore, all issues the Supreme Court had to revisit the, all these issues in the year 1961 in Karthi Kal Argad versus State of Maharashtra. And the Supreme Court heard the the the, the matter the, the full court of the Supreme Court. And at that time, Supreme Court had only eleven judges. The entire court heard the matter. And in that case also, the court only went into the question whether handwriting, uh, then uh, sig uh, sig uh, the signatures, blood samples, uh, whether compelling an accused to give his handwriting or blood samples, etc., amount to violation of Article 20, sub Article 3, namely the protection against self incrimination. And the Supreme Court said, it does not. But the question, the other question, whether police could seek the custody of an accused for interrogation and put it otherwise, an accused could plead that he shall not be uh, given to the police custody for the purpose of interrogation was not squarely discussed. Now, thereafter, this issue has not been raised by the lawyers. I thought when Chidambaram's custody was sought, this issue, because Chidambaram is such a learned man, such a erudite lawyer, he would raise it. Unfortunately, even Chidambaram did not raise it. So the, now, the, then, if you, if you examine the, uh, the large number of cases on Article 23, you will find all of the cases are on the question of Article 20 sub article 1 and sub article 20 sub article 2 that no, no, no person shall be prosecuted and punished for the same offense. The protection against double jeopardy. And those cases are aroused with respect to the proceedings under the Customs Act, section 108 of the Customs Act. And, and maybe such a, there is a scope for such proceedings under, under section 11 of SEBI, but not much case has come. And then under FERA, say under Section uh, 8 of the Customs Act, an adjudicating authority could impose a penalty. But the Supreme Court held that adjudication proceedings is not a prosecution because it is not uh, uh, judicial proceedings. And therefore, a person who is uh, subjected to adjudication proceedings which has resulted in penalty being imposed can be prosecuted. And you are aware that under Farad regime, uh, uh, very often the uh, uh, exporters who have failed to have uh, repatriated the proceeds are uh, proceeded against for uh, non repatriation of the proceeds of the experts by the enforcement directorate. And the same offense, they are prosecuted also. So, therefore, this, this was the, this double, it actually amount to double geopathy. And then uh, it was then said after the judgment in Thomas Dana case etc., where a distinction was made between judicial and uh, quasi judicial function etc., and it was held in Thomas Dana's case it was held that the adjudication proceedings at the hands of the customs authorities of the department action is an executive action, not a judicial action. Therefore, does not amount to prosecution. But Subsequent the, the, the decision of this, the House of Laws in Ridge versus Barbin, the Supreme Court in 
בין הפנס קיס הלטרין, הלטרין מנהל גנדיס, קריפק, כל זה, זה הדיסטינקשן בין היודישן ואדמיניסטרטי פונקשן אס, סיסטם אקסיסטנס, אובליגנטיטט, ולכן, אם הפרסונס, הסיטיזנס, סיבל רייטס הם אינפריץ, זה יודישן פרסידנס. Now, the other aspect, namely the protection against exposed factor legislation, there are very few instances and few cases on that respect. So, Article 20, the core of the Constitution, if it is given its, its full sweep and uh, uh, import, then It is impossible for the police to seek custody of an accused uh, for the purpose of interrogation. And, and see, this is not something new. B way back in the 17th century, 18th century, 18th century, you must have heard of uh, Blackstone, Blackstone's commentaries of laws of England. Blackstone said, the guilt against an accused has to be accused is not to be wrung out of him or not to be what not to be wrung out of him but has to be established by other men and means so therefore Blackstone said a person, uh, the custody of an accused can be sought not for interrogation not to extract evidence from him but if he is he is likely to uh, you know jump the law he is If he's not, uh, if he's likely to evade the law here, or he is uh, influence the witnesses or hamper the investigation, then his custody can be sought. And his custody is where in jail, not in police custody. So time that lawyers raise this fee issue, and if the lawyers raise it, I believe the courts will have to seriously consider this uh, this issue. this aspect and uh, it, I believe it is impossible to hold that uh, within the meaning of article 23 a custody could be given to uh, police can ask for a custody of an accused for the purpose of interrogation to extract evidence from him to prove the case against him by uh, 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 by through him Th that is certainly not possible And you might, one might wonder, suppose the police is not allowed to uh, interrogate the accused and uh, find out the circumstances which has resulted in the offense, etc. How the interest of the state could be protected? How you can investigate uh, crimes, bring the accused to books? So you remember, if in the Blackstone's days, in the 18th century, uh, the self-incrimination was considered to be a taboo, then it ought to be a greater taboo today because today we have the, all this the science and technology is available. The, through scientific means we can establish the crime. And once the court interpret that the ambit of Article 23 extend a full protection against self-incrimination, then the, the era of in a police torture and uh, third degree met methods will uh, come to an end. I'm sure this issue will be raised and the court will give, render, certainly render a judgment upholding the Constitution, Article 23 of the Constitution. Thank you.